देखो तो वॉट डिड वी स्टडी राइट इन द बिगनिंग फर्स्ट वी स्टडीड देर आर फोर क्लासेस अकॉर्डिंग टू द वॉग हैंड विलियम्स क्लासिफिकेशन देर आर फोर क्लासेस ऑफ एंटी एरिजमिक ड्रग्स दैट इज योर क्लास वन क्लास वन इज फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन टू क्लास वन ए क्लास वन बी क्लास वन सी एंड क्लास वन ड्रग्स वॉट इज द मेन मेकेजम ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ द क्लास वन ड्रग्स that is they are going to inhibit the sodium channels okay in the class subclass 1a you have got the two main drugs the quinidine and you have got the procanamide okay so uh, quinidine and this procanamide so quinidine we studied that they are mainly going to inhibit the sodium channels in the activated state and uh, quinidine the main side effect of quinidine Now, is that it is mainly going to interact with digoxin. It is going to cause. It has also got some vagolytic actions, and um, apart from that, there is also an increased risk of torsa these three points. Uh, and where you can use it, it is effective in many atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. Next, procanamide. It is similar to quinidine. Okay, it is similar to quinidine, but it it is less toxic as compared to the quinidine. It has got less vagolytic actions. it doesn't interact much with digoxin and uh, is uh, the main uh, side effect is hype it has got some hypersensitivity side effects okay next come to the 1b drugs in the 1b drugs uh, like 1a 1b 1c the main difference between these three is that 1a causes a moderate lowering of dv by dt this slope this is the dv by dt by blocking the sodium channels it is mainly going to cause a decrease in the slope of this dv by dt so this slope is moderately decreased in class 1a drugs little decreased in class 1b drugs and maximum it is decreased in the maximum it is decreased in the class 1c drugs okay next we come to the class 1b drugs 1b drugs i told you about the lignocaine or the lidocaine okay and we also studied about the another drug that is phenytoin and the tocanide and mexilatine out of which lidocaine and mexilatine is commonly used lidocaine this is mainly as discussed it mainly blocks the uh, sodium channels but in the inactivated state like one was blocking in the activated state lidocaine is going to block it in the inactivated state and uh, the most prominent action of lidocaine is that it is going to suppress automaticity in the ectopic foci okay and uh, it is inactive orally uh, we have to mainly give it by a iv bolus and it is very much effective in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia least cardiotoxic drug it is mainly given for the uh, it is uh, mainly it is given uh, it, the main side effects of lidocaine is mainly the cns side effects okay then i told you about mexilatine it is a oral analog of uh, you know of lidocaine and uh, it can be given for the chronic uh, ventricular arrhythmia treatment for the chronic treatments of ventricular arrhythmias and um, right so some other drugs also had told you i told you about this tocanide tocanide same mechanism of action of lidocaine but it has got some serious immune side effects immune based side effects and another drug i told you about phenytoin in this group only class 1b it is mainly uh, reserved for the use of the digitalis induced cardiac arrhythmias okay so next come to the group 1c in the group 1c uh, we saw it causes the marked subset the most marked decrease in this dv by dt is caused by this group 1c so in this group 1c we have got uh, certain drugs like we have got these drug named propafenone okay we have got this drug flecainide enconide Okay, so we have got these different drugs in this group of drug. Okay, so out of which this propafenone uh, is the it, the main action is by blocking the sodium channels. Eight minute hold on. Okay, so this uh, propafenone. as the mechanism of action it is mainly going to uh, block the sodium channels and it has got uh, it mainly it is going to depress the impulse transmission uh, in the his purkinje fibers and also in the axillary pathways it is ab absorbed orally and uh, iska jo main use hai that is uh, it is mainly used for maintaining the sinus rhythm in the patients of atrial a flutter and atrial fibrillation 
okay and uh, this is the main drug which is used the propaconone flecainide and canide are also good drugs but since they have got the proarrhythmogenic potentials they are not used much um okay and next we come to the next group of drugs that is your class 2 okay class 2 drugs they are mainly your beta blockers so in this beta blockers we have got the main drugs which we use is your propranolol and we are going to use your esmolol some other drugs which we are going to which we can use is metoprolol and esbutalol so these are the main drugs which we can use propranolol Uh, this is mainly a, as you know it's a beta blocker and what effect it is going to have it is mainly going to uh, have a effect on the nodal cells so what it is going to do is that this propranolol is mainly going to inhibit the arrhythmias which is uh, seen due to excess amount of catecholamines which has been induced by catecholamines uh, the arrhythmias that is mainly you know, the propranolol is going to mainly suppress the adrenergically mediated ectopic activities and uh, what is how it helps in this uh, what changes does it do it causes a decrease in the slope there is a decrease in the slope phase 4 depolarization okay and uh, it also increases the action potential duration it increases the erp it increases the act, uh, effective refractory period mainly of the av node and uh, in the ecg changes you can find that there is a prolongation of the pr interval so iska jo main what is the main use of this propranolol propranolol is mainly it is uh, used uh, for abolishing it is mainly used in the control of the uh the uh, it is very useful for treating the inappropriate sinus tachycardia and also you can give it to control the ventricular rate in patients um with uh, who are having the atrial flutter or the atrial fibrillation you can use them in these cases and uh, esmolol same as propranolol but only thing is that it is ultra short acting drug okay next we come to the class 3 drugs in the class 3 drug you have got a number of drugs under this that is your amapodarone which is the most important drug in this group then you have got other drugs like you have got dronadarone okay and you have got other groups of drugs like you have got your sotalol dofetilide dofetilide and you have got your ibutilide so what about the amiodarone the amiodarone it is having uh, multiple actions not only what is the main function of this class 3 drugs the class 3 drugs they are mainly um, uh, they are going to be the they are going to open up the potassium channels okay so that is the main function of these class 3 drugs is that sorry they actually going to block the potassium channels okay so the main function of these class what is the what do the class 3 drugs do they are mainly the potassium blockers so the main the potassium which is exiting the coming out the potassium is mainly getting uh, coming out from the cell mainly in the phase 3 and this is the phase of repolarization so what it is going to do is that it is going to prolong this repolarization phase that is the phase 3 and this action potential duration as well as the effective refractory period is going to get uh, prolonged okay so uh, but amiodarone apart from blocking the potassium channels it also blocks the sodium channels to some extent the beta block the beta uh, receptors to some extent and also the calcium channels also they are going to block because of its uh, wide you know the way mechan wide uh, mechanism of action it has also got a wide spectrum of activity that is it can be although the main uh, the uh, indication of this amiodarone that is it is mainly in the ventricular tachycardia recurrent vent main indication is in ventricular tachycardia recurrent vent ventricular tachycardia but you can also use them for the paroxysmal ventricular uh, uh, supra paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia you can also use it for the atrial fibrillation atrial flutter atrial fibrillation all these conditions also you can use the amiodarone amiodarone ka another important thing is its toxicity it has got uh it is quite toxic because it has got some extra cardiac side effects and cardiac extra cardiac is the main 
you know the main the toxic effects are mainly in the extra cardiac cardiac mainly because it has it is also going to depress the av conduction it sometimes results in heart block if the patient has already got a pre existing disease in the heart extra cardiac side effects are many it can cause pulmonary fibrosis it can cause hepatitis it can cause corneal micro deposits it can cause deposits in the cornea it can cause corneal micro deposits and it can also cause hypothyroidism because it is going to prevent the conversion of t4 to t3 but these side effects mainly come on the chronic use okay so myoderon can be given both by the oral route and also it can be given by the iv route depending upon the condition of the patient okay so then next is dronadaron it is a new drug it is uh, uh, it's just it's not having the iodine uh, moiety of this amiodar non iodinated congener of amiodarone it is less toxic and it is also less effective than amiodarone the main indication of dronadaron is mainly in supraventricular arrhythmias it is mainly limited to supraventricular arrhythmias then come to sotalol although it is a beta blocker but it is under this class 3 group of drugs so same mechanism it is going to prolong this repolarization by blocking the potassium channels and this is also mainly used effective in the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia it can also be given for maintaining the sinus rhythm in atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter next is dofetilide and ibutilide these are the two new drugs so these two new drugs same mechanism of action they are going to prolong the dofetilide de they are also going to prolong the apd and drp and the main uh, the use of this dofetilide and this ibutilide is for converting the uh, atrial fibrillation or the atrial flutter to sinus rhythm so this is one of the the main use of this two new drugs that is dofetilide and ibutilide and last we shall talk about the class 4 drugs the class 4 drugs that is your calcium channel blockers okay so their main work is to mainly inhibit the calcium mediated slow channel inward current so as you know that here this upstroke this is mainly because of the calcium entry this is action potential of the nodal cells nodal tissue so what in the class 4 drugs we have mainly got two drugs that is your verapamil and you have got this drug diltiazem verapamil is a more effective uh, drug it is uh, it has got uh, more effective action on the heart as compared to diltiazem diltiazem has got mixed actions and uh, what do these drugs do they are going to block the l type of calcium channels and uh, you know, what does this verapamil does it mainly depresses the calcium mediated this calcium mediated depolarization this is going to be depressed by this verapamil this phase 4 of the sa node so this is going to be reduced and thereby there is going to be bradycardia so and uh, verapamil it also causes the prolongation of the erp the effective refractory period in the av node so what is the main uses of these two drugs the main indication is in paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia it can terminate the attacks if you give 5 mg of verapamil iv in uh, 2 to 3 minutes it is very much effective in terminating the attacks it can also be used for controlling the ventricular rate in the atrial flutter or the atrial fibrillation patients and uh, same with diltiazem the only thing is that diltiazem is more e more effective it has uh, it has got mixed action but it is more effective in controlling this ventricular rate in atrial flutter and fibrillation patients then next come to some of the miscellaneous drugs in the miscellaneous drugs i told you about this adenosine adenosine how it is acting on the a1 receptors and it activates the potassium channels it is causing activation of the potassium channels and thereby it has got a depressant action on the sa node a depressant action on the av node and also a depressant action on the atrial muscles so as a result of which there is bradycardia there is depression of there is decreased conduction and there is also decreased excitability so this is the drug of choice in the treatment of psvt this is we give it iv route this uh, it has got a very short half life and uh, it causes a very brief duration of action uh, so adenosine another miscellaneous drug 
that is your magnesium. Magnesium is mainly given for the treatment of torsa these D points. Torsa these D points or for polymorphic ventricular tachycardia or for any refractory ventricular arrhythmias, we are going to use this magnesium. Okay. So this is all about the different types of antiarrhythmic drugs. Class 1, mainly the sodium channel blockers. Class 2, the beta blockers. Class 3, calcium channel blockers. Class 3, potassium channel blockers. And class 4 is the uh, your calcium channel blockers. And as I told you, this class uh, the 4 drugs, main indication is in PSVT. Class 1 drug, depending upon which group, 1A drugs can be used for both atrial as well as ventricular. Class 1A, 1B drugs mainly in the ventricular tachycardia. Class 3 drug, again it is divided. Uh, it can be used for the ventricular tachycardia and certain cases it can also be used for atrial fibrillation and flutter also. Okay. This is, this is class 1C, not class 3. This is the class 1C drugs. Okay. In class 2 drugs, they can be used mainly for the catecholamine has become excess for that, the tachycardia which is arising, adrenergic induced tachycardia, there you can use it. You can use them for PSVT and uh, you can also use them for converting the, controlling the ventricular rate in atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation patients. Okay. Class 3 drug, again, depending upon the type of drug, amiodarone, if you are using, you mainly give it in ventricular tachycardia. You can also give it in PSVT. And dronadarone, that is mainly given in PSVT. Ebutilide and dofetilide, that is again give, given for controlling, maintaining the sinus rhythm, Fragment. atrial fibrillation. Okay. Then last is your class 4 drugs. Class 4 drugs, calcium channel blockers. We mainly give them for the treatment of PSVT. Then we have got this adenosine, which is the drug of choice for the PSVT. So this is your...